to Shift Watch. I'm your host, Starbuck. In this episode, Sandy and I sat down for a session where we explored what triggered her to reach out. Inner Earth had much to do with it, but that was just a starting point. Next, record-setting sunspot activity has been rising, and it appears as these spots are gaining strength as the sun rotates them back into Earth-facing positions. The Earth Master has an update for us. Then, a few notable incidents were recorded recently. And when I say recently, I mean within the last few days. And I offer them for your consideration. First, clouds or craft over Taiwan. You be the judge. Followed by significant craft recorded over the Tucson, Arizona skies. Skeptics may suggest this is aircraft. You'll see approximately 30 seconds in a craft entering from the left that powers up like no aircraft I've ever seen. As the recording continues, there begins to be a considerable amount of traffic with multiple craft within the field of view. And again, like nothing I've witnessed before. And finally, it's no coincidence that the topic of Andaras has come to the forefront again, and it coincides with a YouTube I ran across yesterday. So here is a snippet of that video with Mickey Magic explaining the magic behind Andara crystals. I'm going to hook into how I connected with you because um, I'm acquainted with Lily Nova uh, through a different group. And she brought you on her channel. And you showed the Inner Earth cards. And I went, what? <laughs> what? Hmm, something really interesting about these cards. So I hung on to them. Nothing really activating yet. Just giving me a pause for thought. A pause for, hmm, let's think more about this Inner Earth thing. Because this isn't the first time... I've run across this in the last 60 some years. So um, we, um, yeah, I think we're going to just fast forward to uh, this year when I um, was called to hook up with you at the Journey to Truth conference. Um, and you agreed. And it took a lot just to get me there this year. And a lot of things happened while I was there. But what happened was that connection with you was an opportunity for me to, to synthesize that which had happened to me or that had, I had a so-called dream <laughs> in the 1990s about um, the uh, diamond core inside of myself. It was a dream it was shown to me, and now I see that dream is really a, a, what was my connection to an aspect of the inner earth, because those pictures in that dream connect. And I was like, whoa, and I a Blu-ray is what I was identifying with by the time I met you, um, and I the blue ray inside of myself, the diamond core was blue. <laughs> and so that inner self connected to that outer inner earth. And then I connected with you and had an opportunity to share that. And unfortunately, uh, I didn't get to watch your, um, pro your presentation there, but I watched after. And many, many things started to click. Click, click, click. Oh, oh, oh. Things have been clicking all along anyway, <laughs> but the inner earth thing began to ramp up. The telos connection began to become that thing that I was ready to start stepping into. Solarham.com is the site. Kevin's up here still trying to get his uh, fundraiser here for the year, 2025-2026 year. He's up around 65% for his goal. Uh, so if you guys feel like uh, helping out, um, you know, Kevin's got a decent site here. I do like it, and I do donate to him when I can. And, uh, you know, everything you need to know here about space weather is easily accessible in a simple layout. And uh, it does take a lot of time and 
and dedication to uh, do all this work. So if you can, help him out there uh, with his site. He's got 396 supporters there helping him. Needs a little bit more. Uh, got some type of Proton event going on right now across the uh, polar regions. That could be from the recent... Uh, well, we, we had a couple X flares this morning, but normally the proton events will really kick up um, following um, almost immediately following the flare. So it shouldn't take this long for a proton event from those flares to uh, hit the ionosphere. But something's going on here. Got a, a little bit of activity across the polar region, so nothing big. That doesn't mean an uptick in Aurora. That just means these uh, charged protons are uh, bombarding the planet. Um, a little bit of prominence activity here. Notice as well, it's a filament area. Good possibility. Sometimes these things blast off. You can see it there on this image uh, fairly nicely. Also back over here, this one here looks like it's starting to loop and maybe lifting off. But there's a couple different ones that are facing the Earth. And if they do blast off, that increases the chance there of seeing uh, the auroras. You know, it's just like a CME in a way. So we'll keep an eye on that. We do have numerous sunspots as well that are currently facing the Earth. And a very large active region back over here. And if, if I'm not mistaken, this is that same sunspot that uh, was out here in May. That caused a lot of... Uh, yeah, a bunch of CME activity and uh, the Aurora events, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But it's so hard to keep track of all the sunspots out here because when they come back around the bend, after going along the far side of the sun there for a couple weeks, they get renamed. But they could get renamed numerous times. I'm pretty certain that's that same sunspot, but who knows? Too many to keep track of. But we do have to watch these areas for some decent flaring. This one area right here looks fairly dynamic. A little bit of complexity going on with the dark, deep colors here in close proximity. So general area out here. You can pretty much draw a line out here or a the circle around all of these sunspots. A, uh, a pretty active. Got a decent shot there. I've seen some, uh, some stronger flaring here in the days ahead. 25% chance right now for an X flare. M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance or so. And there's our two X flares from this morning. One from the uh, western limb and the other one from the eastern limb. Uh, no major auroras in the forecast. And if you're lucky, you got a sliver of a moon out there visible tonight. If you're able to see it. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Hurricane activity out. Look at the Pacific out here getting active. The good thing is these are not going anywhere near land uh, for now, but uh, four different tropical systems out there. Kind of rare to see that, but uh, it's active.
And this one here is the Heartstone. It's got a gazillion bubbles in it that actually turn color during the day, during the different um, levels of the sun. It just lights those bubbles up and just fires them off. It's a beautiful piece. It's the Heartstone. It's the only one that's... Why do you consider it a Heartstone? Well, Kim does. Um, because it works with the heart. All Andaras work with the heart, but this one particularly does. What There's about dreaming with Andaras? How do they affect your dreams? Well, in the old days, it was wild, but nowadays they've calmed down. Every once in a while, I'll have a wild dream. I, I don't dream that much normally, but when you do with an Andara, it's very visual, very uh, detailed, a lot of detail. If you pay attention, you'll get a lot of insight some people just roar on, move on really fast with a lot of dreaming. Mm -hmm. And ours make them dream. So would you say the different color chakras, um, when you find those colors in the Andaras, that they can work on specifically? Yeah, they're, they're, they correspond with, with the chakra. uh, your chakras for sure. You got uh, your first chakra, which is going to be a brown. It's actually not in the chakra realm, but... This is, this is grounding, this is earth, this is home. This will bring you home. Sacral? No, this is second chakra. Actually, this is the three chakras. It's one, two, and three. Wow. Amber is one of the great ones because it works on your, your history, all of your history. So it, it can help you real well. It's, you can't see through it that much, but you, you can. It's translucent, not transparent. Like this is not translucent or transparent. And this is yellow. This is an old, uh, old elder. We used to have a lot of this color in the old days. Not a lot. Say like 15, 20 pieces. Look at the bubble there. Are the bubbles significant? In, no, in they're, the they're, they seem to represent more energetics. And what about rainbows? Some of you find rainbows. What is, what is They're rainbows always wonderful. Mean? Rainbows. And this is cosmic ice. Yeah, this is a very unusual, cool piece. Very cool. Cosmic ice. Actually, one of the only piece, pieces we have of this. We have one other piece that's just absolutely clear, like, like in here had this for a lot of years actually this was a third of a of the piece that I had there was one piece and it broke into three pieces this being about the medium you know about the medium of the three there's a bigger one and a smaller one and it used to be very light uh, lavender very light but man it I don't know what happened but it just darkened up a lot it's magic is that a good one for the um, huh? for the crown chakra, would yeah. you say? Mm -hmm. That's a great one. So this is green. This is um, the heart chakra, compassion. And it's not a, about any kind of compassion except self-compassion. If you can't have compassion for someone else, the same as you have compassion, or have compassion for yourself as much as you give to someone else, that's not authentic compassion. When you give it, it's not the real thing. If you're, if you're lackful in taking care of yourself and loving yourself, that's the secret of life, is learn to fall in love with you, fall in love with your life, fall in love with uh, who you are, who you're becoming, and have compassion.